Well, okay. Here's the deal. I actually had like a three hour long video. Well, no, I'm sorry, hour and a half. Hour and a half on top of the hour and a half I had earlier doing the pencils. For this shot, I did the pencils and I was scurrying away at work on the inks and this was basically the shot we had. And it's looking pretty good. <clears throat> then I saw a comment on YouTube from Amar Risco, also known as Oxer. And he had some suggestions about the the framing, um, timing, pacing, you know, basically he had some thoughts about this shot and his sense was that really this is Mr. Big's shot and this continuum of action altogether is kind of distracting from Mr. Big's moment and really he, it, it should go to a shot of him. At least that's what I, I read. I read Oxer's comment one time and I didn't. So I may be quoting him in, in, in incorrectly. But the sense I took away from it just at a glance was, yeah, okay. Maybe, maybe I should rethink my, my strategy here. And because it often turns out to be the case that you can you can rework the staging of a scene maybe instead of one long continuous camera move or something like that um, break it into pieces and a lot of times what happens is you wind up telling the story better you do you do something that's actually easier to do and you get a better result you always want to be open to that possibility well after Oxer pointed that out I kind of said to myself, okay, well, if I'm going to rethink it, I'm going to rethink it in Blender. Let me save this. And I'll show you what I'm doing here. Mainly because of, the, of how easy it is in Blender. If I'm in object mode here, let me, let me see here. Uh, to go ahead and there's me with, you know, sans shirt. Um, doing doing this, I'm I'm actually acting out these parts like with the nunchucks and so showing my muscles off here. And I I actually knocked out what you see here is actually one, two, three, four shots all at once. And I'm like, why don't I just rotoscope this stuff? Um. It is cheating, one can argue, but at the same time, people have, we've always done it in animation, and the idea is to get the best product. Um, and I would say to get to get the most predictably good result. And so I realized, you know, I kind of look like Mr. Big because I got the goatee. And what I did was I rotoscoped it and then chopped a bunch of keyframes out. So it, it looked like a Ralph Bakshi um animation but once I chopped a lot of keyframes out this is what I had and I'm like wait a second this looks really good and then I realized that I'm using OBS this this program here OBS studio is what I use to do my YouTube stuff and I realized geez I got hotkeys set up in OBS so if I hit control shift uh, control alt shift plus it starts recording the screen. Control Shift Alt minus stops recording. And it doesn't really matter what program has the focus. Like I can be on Blender right now and if I hit control if I were to hit control sh shift alt minus right now, this video that I'm making right now would be stopped. So I'm like, wait a second. Why don't I start knocking these shots out in Blender with the background image thing? which is very clunky to do in open tunes. And then cut the shots into Blender, just do a screen cap. Once I have it where I think it's going to look pretty good, do a screen capture and just use the 
the image crop feature like this you can see just capture the screen and image crop it like so and now I can very very quickly see if what I'm doing is working so I did that and I actually if you can believe this I actually that that shot of Akari is actually me it is again rotoscoped and then but and the rotoscoping is just to get the basic structure and timing and then I obviously modify everything to adhere to the to my characters okay so there's that and then there's this reaction shot which we may cut out of the show again this is what I did was I took the rotoscope footage and I just flipped it on the x-axis and then cut out all except the essential frames <laughs> and I'm looking at this and I'm going oh my gosh in the space of like no time at all I can tell if this is going to work or not and and I know if the if the pencil test works I know perfectly well that the final animation will be fine so just look at how this flows we'll go back to here so she's actually in fact we'll go back to here so she's got a little bit of a blubbery thing going on with her lip she drops her knife that's better now be a good girl good girl I'll show you good girl he says take her and I'm going geez oh Pete you talk about production value this is cool the one thing I might change here is I would probably say let's start this shot later but my point is that I my goal is to get from I want to get from concept to do I know if it's going to work? Okay, is this acting screwy here? I think it is. So I'm just going to move these one at a time. I want to go from concept to knowing is it going to work in terms of storytelling as efficiently as possible and as high a quality level as possible. This seems to be a pretty good way to do it. Because I actually didn't even get out my movie cameras or anything. I just, I literally did the rotoscope shots using the webcam I'm just, <laughs> I'm just rolling the webcam and saying well okay I lifted weights and I'm like okay I'm all pumped up let's uh I'll be these guys so <laughs> and if you go back here the funny thing is well this shot was done in blender that's the first one I did in blender um this shot I believe was done in blender so this shot was done in blender what I think I'm seeing here is that the quality is going up and the speed is going up as well because this is just at this point the cool thing is I can show this to my partner this this literally took well okay this was the first one I did this one took 10 minutes to go from concept to finish finished pencil test took 10 minutes so I'm like, holy crap. So I can cut it into the show and let her see it and say, you know, you like what you're seeing. If she likes what she's seeing, great. If not, we'll just take it out. I mean, the cost is so low. So um, anyway, that's. I just wanted to share that because it's like, holy cow, this is really a a great workflow. It's quick to create an anime or a, uh, a rotoscope footage. It's quick to you know trace what you want to trace then turn it into the correct characters take out any keyframes that are absolutely necessary because this is anime I mean what this actually reminds me of honestly is it reminds me of um, it reminds me of the uh, sequel to Avatar the Last Airbender in fact who knows I don't I don't really know because I don't remember what what all she looked like but maybe Akari sort of looks like um Gosh, I forget her name. But, I mean, the point is, what we want is we want effective storytelling. And anything that gets us there is fair game. So at this point, I see myself 
definitely embracing Blender more and more for animation because I knew it was superior for ink and paint once I started using the latest builds. But now I'm seeing that it's superior for the pencil test too. So, gosh, I hate to tell you this, Open Tunes, and I I certainly have some stuff back here. Um, not in this sh this scene, but in the the bigger the the bigger scene, the animatic, basically. Where you know, I don't want to throw all this stuff out. This is there's a lot of good stuff here, but you cannot argue with what your senses tell you. Like for the, for example, this next shot, I'm gonna say this will be done in Blender because it needs tweens anyway. But then this shot and th this shot here, I'll probably just take the Open Tunes stuff and and use it because literally they're gonna go. Whoops. So I don't even think it needs tweens. So this is going to be usable right out of the gate. And and some of this other stuff I did in Open Tunes really I think looks pretty good. So again, I don't want to squander everything I've done in Open Tunes, but man, I'll tell you going forward to very much to my surprise, I'm finding that coming back to Blender is probably going to be the way to go. Because it's getting to the point where I can create almost as fast as I can think. And then I know for sure, is this working or is it not working? So the thing you got to remember is if it's working from a storytelling standpoint, it's going to work. The show's going to look good. I know I can do the ink and paint. Um, so it really is this stuff that has been previously a lot more hit and miss is where you really want to get some economies of scale, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> you want to cut the time. In other words, you want to test a concept to see if it's going to work in the context of the edited show as early as possible. Because if it's wrong, you don't want to have spent two days just to find out, it, well, I don't really like the way that guy moved, so now you have to go back and completely redraw everything or something like that. And this is kind of the issue I was bumping into a little bit um this scene that i just did okay that was i don't know what that was but this scene that i did today to ink and paint this was an hour and a half doing the tweens and then another hour and a half doing the inks and i didn't even post that video if I had done this as a rotoscope, the pencils would have taken five to ten minutes. The ink's going to take longer, but the point is you're going to find out if there's an issue while it's in the pencil test stage. And then do the ink if everyone agrees that it's happening. So you definitely want to take and do what I've been doing here with the pencil test. You want to cut them into the show to make sure that things are working. So, you know, this probably a lot of this goes without saying and if you're a you know, an animation person or a fan or an anime um aficionado, you might be looking at my process here and saying, uh, duh, yeah Dave, what do you what do you been thinking? And you would be right. But man, you know, every day is a learning experience. And I am determined that we're going to figure out how to efficiently create anime. And it's going to be good. And it's going to be good storytelling, good camera angles, good action, the whole thing. And I'm just, I'm going to figure it out. And so today was really kind of a milestone in my opinion. Just because we came up with something that was tangibly more effective than what I was doing before. And this does not look rotoscoped. That's the coolest thing about it, is it doesn't look rotoscoped. It's just, you know, you, you want to only... And, and in fact, this is completely retimed. The actual action that I acted out took probably three times as long. But once I got the just the main keyframes in there uh, that were probably six to eight frames apart, and then I pushed them closer together 
took out everything that wasn't necessary and just, you know, edited it in essence. Edited this to get the timing I wanted. So, anyway, I, I don't know. I just wanted to share this this uh, process because I think anyone who has a creative idea for a story could use these sorts of techniques probably to accelerate their workflow and get a better result without necessarily having having to be um, you know the best artist in the world or whatever you know so anyway that's it snap 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 I'm gonna you know there's gonna be more later but I think I'm gonna keep moving forward with getting these pencil tests cut into the show come back and do the the ink and paint later because the important thing is storytelling that's by far the most important thing if the storytelling is right you'll find a way to make the final imagery look you know good enough so anyway that's it for now if there's more there may be more um i'm not even going to post the hour and a half video of inking the shot that i posted the hour and a half video of penciling tweens this morning because I just don't think there's that much good stuff to take away from it. In fact, halfway through, um, Open Tunes crashed, and I lost this time, you know, because I, I made that critical mistake. I got in the zone, starting enjoying myself, just doing the work, I'm like, oh, flying along. All of a sudden, the last half hour or more of work gone forever. And that's really frustrating. The one thing I will say about Blender, even with 2.8, it doesn't crash very often. There's weird things here and there, but basically it's, it's it's more stable than open tunes, no question about it. And Blender always has been. So anyway, that's it for now, and I'm sure there will be, as usual, more later. <laughs>